Aston Martin DB4. 1976 limited edition Pontiac Trans Am. The build quality in the 1970s at GM was dismal. There's an interesting handprint in the paint. I mean, come on, Bob, are you having a bad day on the line? You can't restore this stuff to be original. The chrome and the stainless is still perfect. The glass is perfect. This is as nice as they get. It's an outlier. So mm -hmm. what do you think your outlier is worth? It's definitely gorgeous. I don't think five to 600 is right though. Colin. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you, my friend. So, what have you brought? Uh, 1976 limited edition Pontiac Trans Am. Wait, it's not a bandit? It's not a bandit. This car commemorated Pontiac's 50th anniversary, so a lot of people don't know that. They think it's a bandit, and it's not. Actually built this car prior, a year prior to the bandit. It looks fantastic. What's your history with well, it? Well, I've had the car 20 years. Okay. I bought it with 8,900 miles on it. It now has 14,000. It's all original. It's awesome. I can't wait to get into it. You know why you're here. You've, you've <laughs> agreed to let me do an appraisal on your car. Sure. If you trust me enough, we'll lock you into our soundproof <laughs> green room. I'll go around and check out the car, sure. and I'll come and get you, and we'll have another conversation. I absolutely trust you. All right, well, I'll check it out, and we'll pull Enjoy. you back out here and talk again. You bet. All, All right. right, thank yep. you so much. Right. I've completed my inspection of David's 1976 anniversary Trans Am. It's a really fantastic, original, unrestored car. It has 14,000 miles on it. I've taken a paint gauge and verified it's all original paint, original decals and graphics, just a fantastically well-preserved car, which is saying something because a lot of these cars were not well-preserved and the build quality in the 1970s at GM, let's face it, it was dismal. The fact that a poor quality car that was a hot rod sold to people that used them as hot rods would survive is really kind of a special thing. That said, there are some things to point out on the car that you would expect from a car of this age. The paint is not perfect. There is some buffer burn and fading here and there on the striping. There's an interesting handprint in the paint, which I can assume there was a factory worker at maybe did this area right after lunch and didn't wash his hands. Maybe he touched it and then he painted it. The decals have fading and wear showing here. But again, original is better than being restored, repainted, restriped. I wouldn't touch it. This is the way I would leave it. There are very few of these cars I can imagine that have this level of originality and low miles. Here are the bird droppings in the paint. They've etched the paint on the hood. That's something you just, you can't correct without erasing the originality. So you wouldn't want to do that. Now, speaking of the hood, let's look under it. This is the big boy. This is the one you want. The 455 with a factory four speed. Impressive unrestored engine compartment. It has factory air conditioning with a four speed. Again, really cool. Original fan and alternator and air conditioning belts are on the car. The fact that this factory paint on the engine is holding on so well, again, shows the level of care the car has received. All the stuff you look for on an original car is here. These are huge additions to the value of a car. You can't restore this stuff to be original. You can restore it to be perfect, but you can't make it original again. I like all of this a lot. You could get a number of interior combinations. You could get this saddle vinyl, or you could get it in cloth, or you could get black vinyl or black cloth. I really like the way this saddle tan interior looks with the black exterior. It works with the stripes, works with the gold. This is the way I would want it. It has the engine turn dash applique, this big Hearst shifter, the formula steering wheel. It has the Hearst hatch tops, which if this car had been used as a daily driver car, these were known to leak. You would have a stained headliner and all this kind of stuff. David's headliner is not stained. There's never been water coming in the car that I can see. The door jams are beautiful. The seats aren't worn. The original carpet is beautiful. Factory AM FM stereo with an eight track. Predictably, Smokey and the Bandit in 
the 8-track player. I don't know if he did that to get a higher appraisal, but it's working. Since I'm in here and I have the keys, I'm gonna start it. Now, this is all stock, stock engine, stock exhaust. I think this thing wheezes its way to 200 horsepower, but it has good oil pressure, it's running cool, it sounds nice, super responsive, smooth, air conditioning kicks on. The car's great, the inside's great. There's nothing that deducts from value in here. I like everything I see. Even behind the license plate, when I go to open the trunk, this is where somebody, if they own this car and they were lazy, they jam the, the gas filler in here, they chip the paint. Again, it shows like a really, really well cared for original car. In the trunk, Hearst Hatch T-tops in their original Hearst Hatch bag. That's something that's really rare to see as well. I like this period Fuzzbuster 2, which is far better than the Fuzzbuster 1. This would tell you like, half a mile before a cop. I talked before about 1970s GM build quality. I mean, come on, Bob, are you having a bad day on the line? Did you have to leave all this seam sealer piled up in here? One more neat feature on David's car. This car has its original exhaust. It also has its original black anodized exhaust splitters. That was a really low production thing. They're extremely rare today. Again, super cool original detail. Using the Haggerty Valuation Tools Condition Rating System, just based on pure condition, this car would qualify as a number three condition car. But this is an original unrestored car, so you cannot fault it for flaws in the factory paint. You cannot fault it for assembly line deficiencies and the poor quality that Pontiac built into the car. Because it is all original, I'm going to bump this car to an HVT number two condition because an original unrestored car gets judged to a different standard. We can't judge it as a restored car. We can judge it on its originality. And the originality of this car is so spectacular, it deserves a number two. So I've done my appraisal. I have my number. It's time to go get David and see if what I think it's worth matches what he thinks it's worth or if we're gonna have a difference of opinion. Hey, David. Colin. Welcome back. Well, thank you, I yeah. think. Yeah. <laughs> to be determined, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, I love your car. Thank you. I mean, it's obviously really special. We also know the market is vast and varied. Exactly. So before I tell you what I think yeah. it's worth, I'm curious, it's an outlier. So mm -hmm. what do you think your outlier is worth? I think the car is, in this market, is probably maybe 100 to north of 100. I just want to make sure that I wasn't insane, so I called <laughs> Jim Madison Good. when you were locked so Jim in the knows room. knows car very well. And that's what he said. He goes, I know the car very well, and I said, this one has the black anodized tips on it. He goes, yes, it has the black tips, right. it has the tan interior. I don't know of a better one. Right. So I asked him what his number was, oh. and his number was the same as yours, which was the same as mine. <laughs> so three people are in agreement that it's worth $100,000 yeah. today, and two people want it, like anything else, right. it could be worth right. more. Right. But it's a car you couldn't duplicate. That's the moral of the story. That's why of the 50 Trans Ams I've owned, this is the one that I keep. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's just that special to me. Yeah, and you have the right 8-track. Yeah, I do, I have the right 8-track. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for bringing it. You are it. very welcome, really it's appreciate my pleasure. It. The price is the price, the value is the value. It doesn't change the fact that I'm not gonna sell the car. It just confirms that maybe I need to up my Haggerty insurance a little bit on the car, right? <laughs>
Now this is a Series 4 DB4. The Series 4 cars still have the slotted grille, a little flatter hood scoop, and the three taillights that we'll see in the back. They also were the first DB Series cars to come with a factory overdrive. Additionally, this car is an original left-hand drive example that was sold new in California. These are all very important things when identifying the value of a DB4. Let's talk about the condition of the car itself. This car came from a well-known Aston collector, restored by a well-known Aston restorer, and this was a few years ago. The car was finished in 2012. Since then, it's been driven. So it's no longer a number one fresh show car, but I can tell you it's not far away. The only flaws that I can see on the car as we walk around, there is a little bit of shrinkage in the paint. I did notice one crack on the side of the hood scoop, other than minor little things like that, stuff that can be corrected with a little wet sanding or detailing or polishing, it's very close to a number one car still. It's been driven and enjoyed, but the chrome and the stainless is still perfect. The glass is perfect. John's had a clear bra put on the front of the car to protect the paint from stone chips. There's paint protection added around all the wheel lips. Super smart stuff to do on a freshly restored expensive car. All the way around the back, the chrome is concourse straight perfect, shiny, everything looks as you would expect from an expensive car like this that was restored properly. I talked about the taillights. The fourth series cars have these recessed triple lights on each side going inside of the car. This is where the British do things really, really well. Wood steering wheel, this beautiful painted dash, chrome rim Smith's gauges, everything's luxurious and nice, finished exceptionally well. And on John's car, it's perfect. Everything's perfect. The chrome work is perfect. The etching in the chrome work is perfect. The door handles, door latches, all this stuff is just perfect. I cannot fault the condition of this car on the inside at all. It's as nice as they get. <laughs> Now that is how a car should start. It has a stainless steel exhaust, so it has a really nice sound to it. All the gauges are up, everything's working nicely. I mean, the car is just beyond reproach in its mechanical function and condition as far as I can tell. We should take a look under the hood and see what's going on under there. Sorry, let me correct myself here. I think it's called a bonnet. It's got the double overhead cam, straight six, famous Aston DB engine. This is the way it left the factory, this is correct. I verified the chassis number plates are all here, they're all correct. It's embossed with an L, so it's a factory left-hand drive model. I've checked the engine number that's on the driver's side of the block. It matches the engine number on the plate. It's a numbers matching car. Everything's right, original drivetrain. I would like to sit here and pick this thing apart, but there's nothing wrong at all under here. The car is perfect. So on the Haggerty Valuation Tools Condition Rating Guide, if this car were as John bought it, it would be a number one. However, a number one is a perfect show car that hasn't been driven or used. It's impossible to drive a car and still have it be a number one. So since this car has been driven a few thousand miles since it was a number one car, it's now a number two car. I'm sure if John wanted to, he could send this car back to the original restorer's shop and ask him to spend a few days on it, cleaning, polishing, doing a little wet sanding and buffing and touch up, and you could easily return this to a number one condition car. My appraisal is now complete. I have a number in my head that I think might surprise John a little bit. Hey John. How we doing? Well, you're about to find out. Gone over your car, done an appraisal. Before I tell you what I think, what do you think your car is worth? Uh, I think these are selling between five and six hundred thousand dollars. I mean, I think this is an upper limit because it's so nice. It's definitely gorgeous. Fourth series car. It's one everybody wants. It's a good car. I don't think five to six hundred is right though. I think today it's a seven hundred to seven hundred fifty thousand dollar car. There are not examples like this out there. As you know, finding a good one with the original engine and all the history and all that stuff restored by the right guy, can't do it. You couldn't walk out today and buy one. You could be right, I don't follow the market that closely. Well, I really appreciate you, Brand. I hope, I hope it's you. good news. Yeah, yeah, it is good yeah. news. And it's a lovely car. I love the car. I'm not gonna sell it, but it makes me feel good that it's worth more than what I paid for it.